are listening to Acupolitics, a Harry Potter reread podcast focusing on politics in the wizarding world. I'm Adri, one of your hosts, and a recovering English major who is on a hormonal roller coaster. <laughs> I'm Helene, your co host, producer, and just so intensely tired person. Oh, same um, here, but th- th- that's part of the roller coaster for me. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just tired. I'm tired in every sense of the word. Yeah. Helene, I have next to me a packet of Tums. <laughs> Very perfect this time, not tropical. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's uh, how I'm doing Um, in my mid-30s. <laughs> yeah. No, I had Tums with my breakfast the other day. That's that's what being an adult is. I oh, had oatmeal so and it didn't agree with my heart and uh, just chowing on Tums at 11 in the morning. It's, you know, normal just, stuff. Uh, <laughs> oatmeal of all things. You would think that is so mild. Well, like, it was, it I, I, I wasn't sure because I tried a new coffee. Cre- this is such a boring conversation. I am sorry, <laughs> listeners. I tried a new coffee creamer and I tried a new oatmeal that day. So I don't know if it was one or the other or the, like a combination of the two. In short, being an adult sucks. Um. I miss being a I, kid. <laughs> I saw the street where it's like someone overheard like a freshman from college, like end of year, saying like one year down the re- you know only 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 three more years and I'll be working at my dream job. And <laughs> the, the next one, you know, the next sentence says, "Should I tell her?" And uh, I was like, "Oh man, like I feel that." <laughs> oh god, if you think, if you think you're gonna get your dream job right out of college, man, I you have such idealistic views on life yeah I never never really I I don't think I really ever thought I was gonna get my dream job right out of college but like I was not fully prepared for the draining capacity of the job that I did get yeah I mean I I thought I was gonna it wasn't until like the end of my senior year that I thought this but I did think I was gonna get my dream job right out of college because I got an internship at my dream job during the the summer of my senior year. And that's what they tell you to do, right? Like, Yeah. And newsflash people, internships do not always turn into jobs, no matter how badly you want them to or how good you are at them. But it's okay. It it only took another, what, five, six, six years. And then I did get my dream job. So it's fine. Of hustling. Just like pure (laughs) hustle. Like, (laughs) exactly. Just don't give up. Well, that's the thing. Like one of the things that I get frustrated about when um, people, you know, talk about what I do, because I do a lot of business development, right? And like a lot of business development is waiting. It's yep. hustling and waiting, hustling and waiting, <laughs> hustling and waiting, and Hurry like, up and wait. yeah, and um, and sometimes the client changes their mind whenever the wind blows, and you're like, fuck it, like I just lost that prospect let's yep. keep on you know but you got to keep hustling because you can't put your eggs in all, in one basket right yeah. and um, <laughs> people who don't understand what i do sometimes people who actually um are executives at companies um will say like why why haven't we gotten this why haven't we gotten that and i'm like you literally asked me to look into this two weeks ago did you expect a contract by now <laughs> yeah I'm sorry. I'm. I forgot where we started in this conversation. I don't know how. I'm we sorry. Got here. We we're just like talking about like how much being an adult sucks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was like, wait. Now we're like, it turned into a venting session about your job, and I was like, wait, what? How did this no, happen? No. No. I mean, <laughs> well, it turned into a venting session about jobs in general, maybe. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, if you're still in college and listening to us, I mean, don't lose faith. Like, I don't want you to lose faith, but also, also, you know, temper your expectations a little bit, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. Be realistic. Idealistic is good for a little bit, but realistic is better. No. And also like hustle and, you know, hustle from now. Cause like, yeah, like Helene says, like she got, she broke into her dream job and field after five years of hustling <laughs> and yes, having yes, an yes. internship at the like field. And that wasn't enough. And like, I feel like our job market is getting extreme, like extremely competitive. The more time passes, so. Ugh. And then we have, you know, a panini going on. You know, just little things. Yeah, but that's okay. 
let's talk about um less depressing <laughs> things. And by less depressing things, I mean a cryptic chapter of Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince. <laughs> <laughs> on this on this episode, Helene, we are. Um, let me refresh everyone's memory. We are talking about chapter twenty five, the seer overheard of Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince. Yeah, this is the one where Harry and Ginny are blissfully happy in the early stages of their relationship, in the honeymoon phase, you might say. Uh, Hermione pushes back on who the Half Blood Prince could be. <laughs> and Harry and Harry runs into Trelawney being booted from the room of requirement, only to learn from her that Snape is the one who overheard her prophecy about him, and he is the reason Voldemort knew to go after his family. Uh, Harry confront, confronts Dumbledore about this new revelation, but Dumbledore insists he still trusts Snape and he asks Harry to accompany him in finding the next Horcrux that he has officially and finally located. But only un- only after he has secured a promise from Harry that he's going to obey him no matter what. I mean, smart though, because Harry. I mean, Harry does loose cannon. Like to- yeah, loose cannon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even him promising he's going to do that isn't a hundred percent guarantee. But at least like they've set the precedent. He's like, I'm setting expectations. You have to do this. And if Harry doesn't, then he's going to feel bad. So. Smart. I mean, Harry, Harry and I are just caught from the same cloth. Like, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, yep, yep, yep. Oh my goodness! So, uh, when we read this chapter, um, Helene, we, I, te- I texted you earlier tonight because I prep right before the episode just to right? test. You know, so this geriatric mind of mine in my geriatric <laughs> pregnancy can kind of remember what happened because <laughs> if I prep. Like two days before, it might not happen. I'm like, oh, I see my notes, but I don't remember why I said that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> that I mean, that happens to me because I when I I do all my notes the day before usually, um, uh-huh. and then if on the day like one of us needs to reschedule or like push a week because of something that happened that day or what how we're feeling or whatever, and we like go a whole week, and I have my notes prepped a week before that's what happens to me where i'm like i wrote these a week ago no idea i have no idea what i wrote can't remember anything (laughs) can't remember the context where i was thinking this from yep you know (laughs) exactly we we need we we need vacations Celine. anyway (laughs) that's not where i was going with this um but it's nice to think about a vacation some sometime when i saw your theme for the week i was like god damn it like (laughs) Yep. Once again, we have the same theme because there is no other theme for us. Yes, here, I'll, I will. I want to play this. One second. Okay, so all credit. <laughs> All credit for that goes to the beautiful women over at Buffering the Vampire Slayer. That is a jingle that they made for their own podcast that they use all the time that I thought was just perfect for this. So don't sue us. I really wanted to use it. Um, But yeah, the the theme is (laughs) the patriarchy. (laughs) Because why wouldn't it be, Helene? Why wouldn't it be? (laughs) Yeah. um, Yeah. I mean... It's pretty obvious after I read this chapter. Like, it it it, it wasn't. It's just even so like, marked. It's so yeah. marked in this chapter. Like the role of women as like secondary characters, and the role of of yep. men as dismissive of women. Yeah, and they basically have an entire like scene in this chapter, a whole conversation where like the subtext is the patriarchy. The entire time. Oh, no. And also, like, the, the subtext is, like, Hermione, of course I don't think, like, girls are dumb. That would be sexist of me. Like, of course I think you're really smart. Yeah. It's just that I don't think it's the girl. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Yep. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what it sounds like? Like, as a father of daughters. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, lots of things. I don't want to get ahead of myself because, I mean, there are lots of things like later on in the episode that I'm going to touch on. But um, it doesn't look I, – I can re- go through my notes real quick and then we can just kind of 
expand on it because we have because yeah we have like it thing. just gave me i'm just saying like it just gave me the same energy as as a father of daughters i would no. never oh yeah no exactly so i mean main reason that this <laughs> is the patriarchy the, the main reason this jumped out to me in this chapter was harry and ron refusing to believe that the half blood prince could be a girl when hermione presents eileen prince as a possibility um what and and it's not it's not just that they don't believe her it's that they just outright dismiss it yeah no they're like they're just like 100% sure so they insist that it's that they're that they're 100% sure that it's a, not a girl that it has to be a boy on two two reasons that they insist that this is the case the vibes the, yeah the the <laughs> spoken the spoken reason that they give is syntax basically like yeah, he writes like a dude. I can tell it's not a girl by the way he writes. Um, that was like the given reason they gave. Yes. The, the, the unspoken, very masculine speech. <laughs> yes. The unspoken reason was, like you said, vibes, gut check, instinct. I can just tell, you know? Oh, I can just tell. And so it, it, it's not. It's not in, like, it, it's stupid. Anyway, um... Girl also, vibes are just not there, okay? Yeah, okay. First of all, this is like, like super gender stereotypical. This this entire line of thinking, and it made me think like, okay, so like, what if Snape was a trans man? Like, or what if like like it's just like I don't. I mean, it's just so I just like I can't. I, I think it would have been far more. I think it would have been like far more subversive if the Half Blood Prince turned out to be like a girl, like and not Snape. Uh huh. Because like, but even the choice of the author to like posit this entire thing, and then like have Hermione cons- constantly question it, and then make Hermione be so wrong, uh-huh. is just the patriarchy to me. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I yeah, the, so the whole thing about them like insisting they're right because of dumbass reasons that are stupid and not valid at all. And then the um, author making one, them right <laughs> yeah, is one th- is one thing, but then to make them right it just pisses me off. Like I would have preferred that how cool, how how cool would it have been just like like you said subversive. Uh would it have been to have this whole conversation where they're like, "Oh, I'm 100% sure it's a dude. I'm 100% sure it's a dude." And then like twist it's actually a girl and like they're completely thrown off like exactly and, Herm- and Hermione not surprisingly was right the whole time because Hermione tends to be right about shit <laughs> except on this because obviously she didn't read the vibes right in this text yeah yeah he he it's just the prince writes like a dude like Hermione come on <laughs> right um uh, like i just want to know like are there like a lot of like penis drawings and yeah does it have like, prince, about, like oh i love sports and cars and i want to fuck women like does he write that in this in the fucking notes on his how the fuck do you know he writes like a dude like th- that's just so stereotypical i hate it um so is it like but, is it that that the font is like chicken scratch you know like i mean i have shit at i have shit handwriting no too. no I know, I know, like, but you know, like the stereotypical, like yeah. bubbly handwriting is women's yeah. handwriting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's stupid, and it's not, but this is not the only instance in the chapter where this kind of shit happens. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's the worst. It's the worst. All I'm sorry. There's, there's. We should put like an extra explicit, explicit rating on this episode because I've cussed so many times. <laughs> but every time, uh, girl, like that's a set, that's a default setting. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, I get fired up when I talk about the patriarchy, guys. I don't know if you knew this. Um, what? <laughs> right. So, yeah, this was obviously the worst op- the time in the chapter where they, the patriarchy comes up, the, the, like, most infuriating. But I also think, so, as I mentioned in the, in the summary, Harry and Ginny are, like, newly in love, and they're, like, in their honeymoon phase. Um, and Slughorn, they talk about how, like, Harry... Harry's doing worse in class now because he doesn't have the book because the book is like hidden and he doesn't have access to the book. So he's doing worse in potions class. And they do like this offhand comment about how Slughorn just is like, oh, it's okay because I just assume that, you know, you're happy and in love and you're lovesick. And that's why um, 
why are you doing so bad in my class all of a sudden? Uh, and first oh, but of that, all, that, excuse, that excuse would not fly with a woman, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. My question was, would he, would this happen if Harry was a girl? Would he do this for any girl, even if it was Har- wasn't Harry? Like, no. Oh, you're, you're, you're sucking at your job. Oh, oh, it's, you just must be like distracted by that woman's boobs. That's fine. It's okay. Like it, it really, it really struck me as locker room talk, honestly. Well, and that's the thing, like this, not only locker room talk, but we see this like in our real world, the AKA the muggle world, right? Where if there's a claim of sexual harassment, the onus is usually put on the woman who reports the sexual harassment. Like, but were you flirting with him? Were you wearing provocative things to the office? Like, all these things is like, she was definitely asking for it. And I know that we are slowly shifting to not doing those things, but it's still in the culture. It's still in the back of all our minds. It's still something that they resort to in order to excuse men's actions however reprehensible they are it's like it's like they you know i don't know if some like they like um if you've ever heard this but like when i was growing up um the refrain was like man can't handle or control themselves it's up to the woman to put a stop to it yeah that's why dress codes like stop women from wearing spaghetti straps and like Sh- skirts that stop above the knee and shit like that. Correct. Yeah. So so it's putting like all the burden mm-hmm. on the woman when like honestly I've been sexually harassed wearing like a baggy sweatshirt. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's the idea of boobs, not the boobs themselves. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes <laughs> it's the idea of like it's a woman, so why wouldn't I, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, you know, I can't control myself because I'm a man. Like, it's taking away, like, it's taking away the responsibility for their actions and placing them on the woman's body. So, so basically, by Slughorn saying this, he's like, oh, you know, I understand. I understand that you just can't help yourself. It's fine. Yeah. Yep. I mean, at least, at least in this scenario it's not like and jenny jenny is a willing and like happy participant in the relationship it's not like yeah but would yeah. jenny be cut the same slack though if no she, she no i i don't think she like if we flip if they flip spots and jenny is in slughorn's class and all of a sudden she's poor, performing badly and, and she's like oh but i just got a new boyfriend he'd be like i don't fucking care Exactly. And that's like, again, we we are both the seductresses and also the ones that should be punished. <laughs> like, right. Just, just I mean, everything. So listeners, if you if you disagree, like, that's totally valid. If you think that Jenny would have been treated the same as Harry, let us know. And, and if you have like, I'd love to hear your reasoning. But I personally, as far as I am concerned, in terms of what I know about the patriarchy, and how I've been treated in this world, and how I've seen people of my gender being treated in this world. I, I don't believe that. So, Helena, another part of this chapter where I saw the patriarchy, um, and I know you're going to love this <laughs> because it's your favorite sport, um, is when Ron tells Harry and Jenny, like, just because I gave you permission to start dating each other. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, I hadn't thought about that when I was reading the chapter and doing my notes. But yeah, I mean, I... You're right. It's my favorite sport. Hating Ron, hating on Ron is my favorite sport. I'm always up for a reason to hate on him. And yeah, I agree. That was shitty of him to say, even though I know it was like the author obviously tried to play it off as like, oh, like I love, I want to be able to have a say in this relationship because I could end it if I wanted to. And they're like, yeah, you can't fucking do anything, bro. Like you could tell us to break up, but I, we wouldn't do it. Like you can't, you can't tell us what to do. <laughs> Yeah, no, so it was like, it's just a throwaway line, right? Like when he says it, mm-hmm. and then Jenny says something funny. It's like, well, you, you better not. And then he goes like, well, you better not be like snogging in front of everyone. And he's and she's like, excuse me, you hypocrite. Like, yeah. Yeah, what about was, you? <laughs> what about you? Like you, who was the one snogging like Lavender Brown in every crevice and corner of Hogwarts, you know? Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's just like the, like uh, women as objects that they, that men can like control 
con- <laughs> like give consent to other men to have yeah yeah it was it was Ugh, weird gross. it was weird i didn't like it it was weird um but yeah i mean and then that was this was only like the first half of the chapter too the second half of the chapter i'd say like the last <laughs> the last like third of the chapter didn't really have any women or any mention of women in it because it's all about like harry and dumbledore and snape and blah 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 but but then we have trelawney though but let's let's talk yeah about that no though. yeah like the right before like because like the last big chunk of the chapter like after trelawney is gone and harry's confronting dumbledore like that's kind of like i i couldn't find any connection to the part patriarchy there other than the fact that like it was just so full of men well um, you know what though i can I, you know how i i can find the connection is like even in the patriarchy, like the patriarchy, you know, it has a hierarchy, right? So like the men, men are above women and men are the doers of things, you know, while women or like secondary characters or like weak men do the bidding of these men, right? Like to, to help in their quest. But Dumbledore is in a higher position than Harry in this patriarchy because he's like more experienced, more respected in the community he's like he's got this air of respectability and knowledge that is well earned so harry can like harry himself says oh shit i've crossed the line i don't think i could come back from this like he understands that even within his privilege there's another structure there and dumbledore is above him in this structure but i think that alone could also just be power like power in the relationships rather than uh like specifically patriot like i don't think it ties to spe- specifically to their gender very much well because like what i'm saying is like even in the patriarchy there's divisions between like classes and also um power structures so yeah. just because harry is a man doesn't mean he has all the power that right. means he yeah. just has more power than women yeah but if if dumbledore were a woman would in that position of power, would he still, would Harry still be below in that hierarchy? If Dumbledore had been a woman, would he had taken her as, seri- as seriously? Because we see but, how yeah. he used Trelawney earlier. No, you stay here. I said, no, you stay here. That's true. He, she is her te- his teacher. Yeah. And he's like bossing her around. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Speaking of Trelawney, I also wanted to bring up. Like, it kind of made me feel real kind of icky, where I feel like Harry just kind of brushes past and ignores the fact that, like, she she refers to what happened when she gets kicked out of the room of requirement as assault. She says, like, I was just assaulted. And he's just like, oh, I don't care about that. Tell me about this. Yes. So it's like, it's, it's like, he doesn't listen to women in this chapter other than the woman he is romantically interested in and therefore he puts in a different category as the rest of the women and Trelawney even though she is in a position of power in relationship to Harry and the school he dismisses that power because within the patriarchy she doesn't have that power she's laughable she's no longer his student and there's like a there's the way that there's the way that Harry talks about Trelawney you know in this inner monologue that is completely dismissive of her experience and complete like we this is not the first time we've seen a professor be like inebriated around harry but <laughs> this is the first time we've seen like a woman. hagrid hagrid is always drunk and so of harry. hagrid is always yeah. drunk in front of hagrid and he never treats hagrid that way and slughorn has been inebriated in front of harry and he doesn't think or treat slughorn the same way he did trelawney yeah, it was their their whole interaction was really weird to me. Like, really, just hit all the wrong chords with me. Uh, and it's this chapter was hard for me to to kind yes. of yes because <laughs> as as you all know by now very very well, I love Harry. Harry is my Harry and Jenny are tied for my favorite character. I love that boy. He usually exceeds my expectations in how he acts and how he treats the other people and and the choices he makes. And this chapter, it it was like it wasn't Harry. Like, it felt like a completely different person. And I hated it. I hated every second of it. I was like, who the fuck? Why the fuck are you acting like this? 
Like, I hated it. It was awful. Yeah, I, I really, really, like I said, I really hated the way he, like, was trying to order Trelawney around first. Like, let's go talk to Dumbledore. And she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go with you. And then it's like, no, you stay here now. You stay here now. Bad dog, basically. You know, yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, like, oh, gross. She's like, well, what about? I thought you told me to report my assault to him, and he's, he's just like, no, say, <laughs> like, Jesus, Harry. I understand you're going through some shit right now, but like, this is a human woman right here, like, who has feelings, who who categorizes what she just went through as assault. Yet you, it's just, oh, it's because she like, but also like, there is like this whole like. Well, she still smelled of sherry and the bottles were far away, detail. Yeah. Yeah. And th- and that is used as a, like, crutch to explain away, plus, you know, the whole Severus Snape thing, to explain away why she- he's so dismissive of her when, again, like we've talked about earlier, Hagrid and Slughorn have been inebriated around him and he doesn't treat them that way. Yeah, this whole episode is just a big rant. Sorry, guys, if that's not your <laughs> feed, but this is, the- I mean, like, we needed this, like... The Honestly, I am today, like today I am primed <laughs> for it, Helene, like the stars aligned. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I am angered by the patriarchy at, at one point or another in almost every single episode we talk about. There's always something, but this one, like it was too overwhelming. I had to get it out. I was like, no, we got to talk about it. Yeah, um, well, it's there. There was to me, there was no other option but say yeah. like patriarchy sexism or whatever have you yeah um and like like in in the same way that i and i know we you and i've talked about this before like in the same way like ron keeps being treated like a female character even though he's a cis man like he gets relegated to like that second tier of just like you go with the girls type of character um, and the way that he's written is very like sometimes like his expressions are somewhat effeminate, I I would say, or like quote unquote could seem as weak. But by the and, and these are choices that the author made, right? So like I don't know, it's just so complicated, right? And I'm I'm co- constantly disappointed, like, man, it wouldn't be cool if like the half blood prince was some like some girl and then there was like another subplot that had to do with the horcruxes and that like that could have been something i don't know it didn't have to be all about snape you guys that's all i'm saying so, okay so i it's i think it's about time we let's get let's get into our deep dive um uh, <laughs> Oh, you mean you mean this was the part of the deep dive? Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. No, um, <laughs> yeah, we have a little bit more to say uh, about this topic. Um, so, my quote uh, from this chapter was, uh, I mean, you're not going to be surprised, but it was as follows. Okay, listen, Hermione, I can tell it's not a girl. I can just tell. The truth is that you don't think a girl would have been clever enough," said Hermione angrily. How can I have hung around you for five years and not think girls were clever, said Harry, stung by this. It's the way he writes. I just know the prince was a bloke. I can tell. It's just vibes, Hermione. It's all Whoa. vibes. <laughs> and like, when you first read this, he, when he when you get to the part where it's like, how could I have rung, hung around you for five years and not think girls were clever? Like, at first you're like, oh yeah, like, totally. He can't be, he can't be being sexist because like, that's a true statement. Like, he'd be dumb to you know, think girls are not clever when Hermione's his best friend. But but then he literally, like, 180s in the same exact sentence, and it's just like, I can, just, I can just tell he's a guy from the way he writes. Like, dude. I have a sense for this, you know? Like, come on. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, you get, you understand. I What I think is that I think Harry, at least in this moment, I think Harry believes that one, maybe two specific girls can be clever. Yeah. But I I don't think he has the faith in the entire gender at this point. Also, as a it's a, it's like um how can I be sexist, Hermione? You're one of my best friends. Like yeah, it's like that. It's I'm also not like racist. The whole- I have a ba- I have a black friend. Yeah, how did like- you know I was gonna say that? <laughs> I mean, that's where it was going, right? I'm I, I'm not racist. I have a black friend. I I'm not sexist. I have a, my best friend's a girl. Like okay, yeah, same thing. So like. Uh, I mean, Seth and I have this joke of like, I can't like he that he'll say like, 
I can't be racist. I'm married to to uh, like woman of color. What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and obviously we do this like ironically, not for real. Yeah. But like, there are people out there that that do believe that that's a qualifier of yeah. like, I, I am in proximity to someone who is different yeah. than me. Therefore, I cannot be marginalizing that person. Yeah, I want. Th- I want to make like those. I want to make very clear, guys, because I I'm realizing now how it could come off. Um, I am not calling Harry sexist, like blanket statement i it is the patriarchy okay harry all men are subject to how like thinking the way the patriarchy thinks harry doesn't he belittles the 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 possibility that the half blood prince could be a girl because of the patriarchy i'm not saying it's because he's sexist i mean there are like women also would have these thoughts also contribute yes because the patriarchy has like programmed us a certain way so harry has like idolized like he's he's built up this per this half-blood prince in his mind idolized him like thinks that he's like this really smart um amazing can do no wrong bloke who you know does all this awesome stuff and in his mind that person is is a guy because yeah and some and some parts of it could be like oh he he sees himself in it a little bit and he wants to, he idolizes him and wants to be like him and since he doesn't know his gender the gender for sure he places that gender on it on the half blood prince because that is his gender it's something he can relate with and identify to, identify with um yeah a woman if there was like some person that they idolized very very highly and they didn't know the gender of it some i mean there are some women who would be like would would imagine it to be a woman but i would say the majority of women would probably picture a man if it's someone of a high esteem because that's like what we're conditioned to believe like that's why everybody like just assumes that god is a man when they because when they when you talk about god you say he exactly so It's a deep cut, guys. And I just want to, we're talking about very serious issues and I, I don't want anybody to think that we're like throwing out accusations because I'm, I'm not saying Harry is sexist. I'm also not saying that Arthur, the author is sexist necessarily. I'm saying that is she he... falls prey to the patriarchy is what I'm saying. Well, I will say, I, I will <laughs> put myself on the line and say pretty sure that on, on top of being a like a turf, the author which which is part of the patriarchy by the way you know um the the author falls prey to a lot of stereotypes that can be construed as sexism yeah. sorry that's just i mean how i see it <laughs> yeah i don't, and I don't I can know talk yeah. about this later like i can i can talk about this now <laughs> it's a touchy depth. subject yeah i can t- i can talk about why i think so more in depth when we talk about how we see this throughout the book but okay. the quota i chose was um, you couldn't have found who it was without asking Harry, asked her, slightly frustrated. The inner eye, said Professor Jelani with dignity, straining her shawls and many strands of glittering beads, was fixed upon matters well outside the mundane realms of whooping voices. Right, said Harry, Harry hastily. He had heard about Professor Jelani inner eye all too often before. And uh, did the voice say any, did the voice say who was there? No, it did not, she said. Everything went pitch black, and the next thing I knew, I was being hurtled headfirst out of the room. And you didn't see that coming, said Harry, unable to help himself. Just the way that he yeah, interacts with Trelawney. He, like, makes fun of her. It's not cool. Is, and even his thoughts about Trelawney are yeah. not filled with the respect that he would give, say, Frenzy, for instance. Or, like, just one of his other, like, male teachers, like Flitwick, or, like, I mean, I just, I just like, I can't imagine him talking to and treating Flitwick this way. Yeah, because I mean, and and people will say, well, like maybe Snape, but it's like, well, they've had a hate, love, hate, hate relationship since like the get go. Trelawney has never done anything like against Harry, other than you know predict his death like every yeah. <laughs> every uh, time. But like, right. that's not that according to McGonagall, that's not an unusual thing. That's just like the way she is. 
Um, so it's not like she's like fixated or like being malicious to Harry. So yeah. that's not the same as like you said, Flitwick or you know other male professors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even Hagrid. You know, he doesn't yeah. treat Hagrid this way. Well, yeah, Hagrid also has the the like fact that he's his friend too. But yeah, um. All right, so when we think about the character that upholding the patriarchy in this chapter, who do you think? Yeah, I, we both said Harry. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's Harry. Unfortunately, it's Harry, and I think we've discussed why. <laughs> yeah, yep. Uh, so on to the next. So um, throughout the book, for me, uh, it did take me a second. I was like, wait, uh, what are some obvious things about the book? And then it kind of hit me all at once. I was like, oh, yeah, the portrayal of women in the book. Uh, specifically, Lavender and Ramel Devane popped out to me the most. Um, the way that Lavender specific, like Lavender above all, the way that she is portrayed in this book, the way that she acts, the way that people think about her, um, uh, yeah, that that's the patriarchy. That's not good. I didn't like it. And Ramel Devane is also seen as like this, I, I guess, vain, uh, no pun intended, uh, <laughs> girl who is just obsessed with Harry. Like it, she does not. Neither neither of these women pass the Bechdel test. Let's just put it that way. Well, in the same like in the same way that like you were thinking about that, I was thinking about just like we talk about, like how women are portrayed as the relayers of information or gossip instead of the doers of tasks, right? Because Harry and Dumbledore are the ones doing the work, right? And the men take charge, like Snape take char- takes charge, uh, Draco takes charge. Um, Draco has Crab and Goyle turn themselves into little girls to avoid suspicion because clearly girls could not be doing bad things right yeah so like just just the portrayal of women as gossipers or just like aloof like even moaning myrtle who (laughs) has a like pivotal part in the last few chapters is just completely just about like oh, no, she only feels sorry for Draco because, like, she has a crush on him or because, and then all she does is gossip and 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 just cry and be, like, a pest. Yeah, it's sad. Uh, it's just, it angers me. As, as and, and that's, and that, that portrayal of women um, as these archetypes with, like, very few exceptions is what I'm just saying, like, Fine. If you don't want to say she's sexist, the, the the author author is sexist. I will say she falls prey to a lot of things that can be seen as sexist because of the way she portrays the women versus the men in this book, with the exception, notable exception of Ginny Weasley. Yeah, although Ginny Ginny also, at least especially in this book, um, a lot of her worth is measured. Or by by like the her relationship status, right? Like her, the the things that we that the parts that Jenny plays in this book largely have to go, do with who she's dating at what time, um, and how Harry feels about her. Yeah, yeah, and how that Harry, person. Yeah, exactly. Like a lot of the plot points that Jenny has in this book have to do with the man or the men in her life. Um, and that's kind of true throughout all of the the books too. Like a lot of the time, it's her her plot points usually have to do with the men in her life, and not something that she did, she does, or can do specifically on her own without any. I don't and know, is but, she only valuable because she's popular with boys? You know. Yeah, there it's a lot. There's a whole lot of stuff that we can dig into in terms of like. Ginny is is a weird one because she's simultaneously a like a like a very good portrayal of like a strong female, but also like a very can, can also be a very sexist or patriarchal view of females as well. And and it has to do probably with the fact that we're seeing it through this boy's eyes, right? It's not it's not an objective third person narrator. It's like it like it's. It's third person, but immersed in Harry's thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. 
But um, well, I know we've talked about a lot of things we don't like in this chapter, but let's talk about one more. <laughs> yes. And okay. get to our Dementors and Chocolate. Um, I'm, I think we have a pretty similar Dementor, but uh, why don't you let me know what yours is first? So, like, I mean... We've already talked about this, but like Harry's complete attitude about the various like towards the various women mentioned in the chapter, except for Jenny, because, you know, she's the one snogging him. Um, yeah. yeah. Like I said, the way like the very, very dismissive way he treats Hermione. I understand the frustration there because she's been, you know, she's been on a rampage this entire book on, about the half blood prince. OK, yeah. so yeah, I can cut him a little bit of slack there, but the way he treats Trelawney. I can't. Yeah. Like, so your, yeah, your Dementor was, like, broad in terms of, like, oh, how Harry is treating various women. Um, and mine is just one specific instance of that broader thing, because I agree, like, I think the entire wait, like, the whole thing should just go in the trash. But this one specific moment um, where Harry just, just when he's just so easily dismisses the fact that um, the half blood prince could have could be Eileen when when Hermione brings it up, and it, it's just so frustrating, especially because Hermione was actually super super like close to being right, because Eileen is the mother of the half blood prince. The prince mm-hmm. does come from Eileen's surname. She was so close, and so like he just easily he just dismisses it, and it's like it just yep yep that's all I have to say. So. <laughs> <laughs> um do we want let's just do chocolate I, i'm getting riled up again. okay 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 breathe <laughs> breathe through it all right so my chocolate is jenny's story about like the the tattoos uh, yeah. that harry and ron are supposed to have um yeah. yeah that was fun just beautiful like chef's kiss love jenny for that he her, her delivery was like dead like dead pan and great Yes, it was. I that was one moment that I really, 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 really wished had been in the movie. Um, oh, same here, same here. Because yeah, that's one of my. It's one of my favorite, like one of the most memorable Ginny moments. I think. Um, yeah, especially in this book. Um, All right. How about you? Mine. I I somehow was able to find like one small moment where Harry wasn't angering me in this chapter. Okay. Um, go ahead. So o- overall, like you know, overall, the chocolate, my chocolate was like just, you know, getting to see Harry and Ginny being so happy in love um, overall. But the specific moment um, that I cited was Harry giving up the rest of his Felix Felicis to give um, to his friends and have them share when he's gone. Um, even though he himself is going to like a really extremely dangerous situation that same night with Dumbledore and probably could use it to not die. Um, himself so it was just like overall this chapter harry was bad in in general but he did have one fleeting moment of selflessness that i thought was nice just one moment of hope amidst all this chaos well (laughs) that being said this is the place where we talk we talk about our patreon uh memberships uh, thank you to our lovely patrons for making it possible for us to keep making this show. Um, if you, lovely listener, who are not a patron right now, would love to help us keep growing and going, <laughs> you can go over to patreon.com slash occupolitics and check out our tiers. Yeah. Uh, so these tiers that we mentioned are uh, at two dollars a month, uh, you're gonna get access to bonus content for every episode, including what we're about to talk to you about. Um, and five dollar and ten dollar month tiers get you access to even more, which includes fiscal rewards that you will come that will come to your doorstep every three months. Well, and in case you're wondering how what that content looks like on today's episode, that content looks like this: we will be talking about divination throughout the series. Ooh, divination. I look a look into our future says that we're going to be talking about divination <laughs> in the future. <laughs> um yeah, that was that was cheesy. Fantastic. Like, forget Great. I said that. Great. Great. <laughs> like A plus <laughs> plus. Well, every episode we ask a a different question of our listeners. And uh last episode we asked the following question. Do you think Snape ever tried to use Septum Sumtra on the Marauders? 
Helene, we got some answers. Give them to us, please. Yes. The first one um, kind of threw me a little bit. Uh, at Charvale on Twitter uh, answered that he did. He said that he used it on James cutting his cheek. And um, I don't I, I, I haven't read the 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 last whatever the last like six chapters of this book are in the seventh book in a, in a little while. So it's it's been a while. I don't remember that happening. Um, and I did a quick search online and I could like has did Snape ever use Sectum Sempra? Um and I, I couldn't find anything. Uh so okay, yeah, I, I don't remember this. At Charvale. Yeah, at Charvale, if if I, I'm wrong and if like I just couldn't find it and you know you like can tell me, please let me know. Or any other listener, if you know that this is a thing, I please let me know because I, I didn't know about that. But um but yeah, I mean if he did that I, that would not surprise me. Um, but yeah, uh, some All of the right. other, some of the other ones we got were, uh, our lo- lovely listener, Jeff said, um, most likely he thought about it, probably even planned it, but didn't go through with it. Whatever else Snape was, and he was a lot, he wasn't a killer. <laughs> uh, and then he also made a little, uh, footnote at the end that said, uh, we'll save the debate about killing, quote unquote, killing Dumbledore because we're almost to that chapter. So Correct. yeah. Um, he wasn't a killer, but yeah, he does kill one of the main characters, but, but he was instructed to do so with the person's consent. So we'll get to that. Yeah. We can talk about so that. Is later. this like euthanasia instead of killing, you know? And then, at, we'll then the, that, that opens a can of worms of like, is euthanasia murder? Uh, uh-huh, like, uh-huh. you know, there's, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. Uh, we can get to that later probably. Um, but good point. Uh, and then listener Scurvy42 on Instagram, they said, I'm not sure he was ever brave enough to fa- to use it face to face on someone. I wouldn't be surprised if he, te- or, or no, sorry. I wouldn't be surprised if he tested it on animals. Which is like, um, you know, sociopathic behavior. But- yeah. I mean, I guess I, hundred- I wouldn't really be surprised either because like he has to test it on something, wouldn't he? Like how I would mean, he know it works? I guess. I guess I don't like, know how, you, like, you, we don't know the, the process of creating a spell. So I guess we don't could really Could you test know. it on a, like, dummy, like when you're, like a, like a car crash dummy, you know? Yeah, like ones that, like, like filled with cotton or whatever. And yeah. maybe, possibly. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's interesting. Um, I'm just thinking about, like, um, like the, the, the Hogwarts uh, game on your phone. Where you're just like practicing spells on a dummy. Oh, yeah. But those, those, like, you wouldn't be able to tell really if you, if Sectum Sempter working on them because they're like hard, right? Like, they would just be like cuts in wood, right? I don't know. I thought, I honestly, I haven't played so, <laughs> I haven't played it so long that I'm like, yeah, I kind of, I'm like, I don't know if it's, they could have also been made out of like burlap. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know either. But yeah. I I think that it would it would be interesting to learn more about the process of like what what goes into being able spell to spell testing yeah create a spell from scratch um like how do you like how does that work but yeah yeah I mean he possibly tested it on animals like maybe I don't know uh, I don't like him so I don't I don't want to put it past him <laughs> all right and then rock climbing girl two three on Instagram said. Maybe. I mean, they were his enemies, and it does say it was meant for enemies. So. I mean, maybe. And then, okay. Yep. Then the last one here I have is lopez.desiree.m on Instagram. They said, uh, I don't know if I can make this noise with my mouth. Uh, pff, pff, yes. I, I, I maybe like puffed. 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 Yes. <laughs> um, if he did, it could be the reason why Sirius never forgave him. I mean a good point fair yeah but i mean obviously he didn't murder anybody with it but because like we would have heard about that i think um but yeah i mean maybe he attacked someone someone with it in school we don't know that's why we asked the question (laughs) all right thanks everyone for all your answers for uh, this episode we have a new conundrum or question if you, dear listener, were in Dumbledore's position, just walking in those beautiful, I'm guessing, purple boots of his, 
this is this is my head cannon and no one can take it away from me. I want purple um, boots. Though. Or like sparkly boots, you know? That'd be real fun. Oh yeah. You know who should be the next Dumbledore? Should be like Jonathan Van Ness. Oh my like, god. That would be epic. He has the hair for it. And like he has the yeah. beard and the and the long hair. Oh yeah. I Yeah. I could see some you know? I could see some JVN in like good Dumbledore cosplay. Now I just want this to happen. Anyway, I, <laughs> I got sidetracked. Ew, Let yeah, me start the question over. Um, if you were in Dumbledore's position in his sparkly boots with a heel, um, would you trust Snape to the same extent? Yeah. I can't wait to see. Want to know. We want to know. Yeah, tell us what your thoughts are. Uh, I, I kind of dropped the ball this week and accidentally posted it a little late on social media, so we didn't have a ton of time to gather answers before this episode. Uh, I will try to be better and post it earlier, and hopefully we'll be able to get more of your answers in there before we record uh, next time. It'll be fabulous. Yes. Speaking of fabulous, let's uh, switch gears and talk about non-Potter stuff. Helene, what media have you been consuming lately? Have you seen The Tinder Swindler on Netflix? I have heard about it, but I have not yet um, devoted I, my eyes eyeballs to it. I think it's right up your alley. I, I, I fully endorse watching it. Um, it is a documentary um, about this Israeli man named Simon Levive who um runs this super long um in like in-depth intense emotional cons like he runs many of them at the same time these really a, long a ponzi emo- scheme a, a, a dating ponzi scheme yeah, if you will it is, is what i've heard a, yeah a dating ponzi scheme where he like gets he has these emotional long cons where he gets into like long-term serious relationships with these women um and use it and gets money from them for you know, one reason or another and uses it to pay for other women like, and, and like build up those relationships and then starts getting money from them and uses it on the next woman. It's crazy. It's insane. And he has swindled, um, over $10 million out of like numerous women over like 10 years. It's crazy. Um, we should you watch know what? it. <laughs> and and the like, and honestly, vibes is not a real thing because, like, if not, we could all tell the the vibes were off, you know, like <laughs> yeah, like it's crazy because, and, and like, it's not always like romantic relationships either. Like, um, most of the relationships are, but like one of the main characters, characters, it's a one of the main people. It's not a, it's a documentary. One of the main people, um, who's telling her story, like she was just a friend of his, like. He Oof. just he became friends with her, and he did the same thing to her. So it's not Good always artist, man. It's not always like you know romantic relationships either. So that that like added a layer of complexity onto it, and um, it's just like. Have he, you heard of like that um, con artist who was in New York and was pretending to be a socialite? No, I haven't. So I think they're making a documentary about her or a TV show about well, her. Well, I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> um, so, like, I I went I went into like a deep rabbit hole of this con artist because, well, you know, I love true crime. But yeah, okay. this she was exposed via like she she was in jail now, but she was exposed via like a like a Vanity Fair or like some kind of article okay. written by a journalist, you know. Um, and what she used to do was like charisma and designer clothes alone she would just like get into these like super rich circles and then like she would always be like oh my god i forgot my credit card um <laughs> and then just like have everyone pay for her um and oh she's my like gosh. oh i'll get you later and like all yeah, this convince like, them that convince them that they're rich that she's rich yeah and, 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 to- by, and by charisma alone she just like scraped by it's just like she's giving like these big tips to like hotel staff that were so hotels and cash so like yeah. hotel staff even thought she was really rich so like it's just like keeping like this also like a similar ponzi scheme but only through friendships yeah that that's remi- it reminds me a little bit of like um 
Elizabeth. I think it's Elizabeth. Is it Elizabeth Holmes? The, the, oh, you mean the Theranos woman? Yes. Yeah, the Theranos woman. And uh, they they just released a trailer. They're doing a Hulu series on it called The Dropout. Um, but how she basically convinced people that she knew what the fuck she was talking about. And then they gave her money. Oh, I'm obsessed with that, too. Like, there's a whole set of podcasts devoted to Elizabeth Holmes. Because So I used to work at this company who was, like, a healthcare company, like, technology company. And, like, the owner of the company was my boss. So I, I worked right under the CEO. And she was obsessed with Elizabeth Holmes, like, before all the scandal turned out. And she was like, look at this woman. Look what she's done. And, like... My CEO is also a woman. So she's like, oh, my God, like women led businesses, girl power. And I was like, she can do what with a drop of blood? Like, oh, wow, that's a really yeah. interesting technology. Um, I don't know about science, but OK. Yeah. I, I always thought it was weird, you know? <laughs> yep. And and then I'm like vindicated years later. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, oh, wow. The Hulu, the Hulu series looks so good. I watched the trailer today and it's Amanda Seyfried who's playing her. And she yes. she gets the in like the inflections and uh, and like body language and everything. It, it, also, also the the very gravelly voice that yes. she affects. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's she does so well. I've never seen Amanda Seyfried in in like that type of role, and it's so it's so good. Like you I know, can who's tell. also playing her in a different in a like a movie is Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, really? They're doing a movie too. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This, this is. Everyone's trying to like as make the Hollywood this, story. As long as this woman is not getting any money out of it, like she deserves to be in jail. So, um, yes. Uh, <laughs> anyway, well, there's, there's a whole thing. There, there was like a whole podcast like covering her trial. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, her whole her whole thing has been a big a big deal. A big do- a big to do. Yeah. So you know, scammers, con artists, true crime. I'm all here for it. Yeah. Speaking of which, I mean, I mean, I can go f- with mine, but I think you have something else. Oh, yeah. No, just uh, I've been playing Pokemon Legends Arceus. It's a new game on the Switch. It's like Breath of the Wild, but with Pokemon. And I've been playing it pretty obsessively since it came out like a week ago. Um, so highly recommend it. It's amazing. If you're a Pokemon lover like me, it's super nostalgic. And I just want to say I already got my goal when I got when I started this game was to um ha- have all eight different evolutions on my like on my team and i have reached that goal very recently i have achieved all eight evolutions and um evie is my favorite pokemon so um so Beautiful. i was just very excited so yes that is it that is all i have well speaking of true crime <laughs> and things that are you know a little nostalgic for me yeah is um I am reading The Rivers of London, which is the first book in the Rivers of London series by Ben Ar- Aronovich. Um, it's okay. also called Midnight Riot in the U.S. So, okay. you know, it depends wh- where you get your your book copy. Um, this story, this story, this novel has everything. It has <laughs> crime procedurals. Okay. okay. That, you, you know, as you and I love. It has yep. magic. You and I love magic. Love magic. It has, it has potential deities. So like a little bit like that Percy Jackson flavor, you know, like just okay, okay, and a and a mystery to solve. You know, you know, I love a murder mystery. I love Got an it. Agatha Christie. You love know, it. so it's just like it just hits all the spots for me. It has a biracial main character, so representation. Goodness, it really does have everything. Is it a female to me, lead? To me, no, it's a male lead. That's the only man thing I'm out at. Mm-hmm. Okay. You lost me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. No, I was telling Seth the other day because um, I'm only like six chapters in and I'm really enjoying it. I'm telling Seth, like, honestly, I made an exception for Ben, for, you know, for this author, even though he's male. I'm going to read him because I never really read male authors anymore so to me they're the exception not the rule so i'm trying to i'm trying to demolish the patriarchy from within myself like honestly like women told stories tend to just like be more interesting to me in general i don't know i don't know what that says about me but 
but that says that you're smart you know you know you, you know quality when you see it this is not so. this is not a male hating podcast by the way i mean i men are, are they play a very important role in society and some of them are good people um uh, yeah m- men are some important. of them are good people <laughs> i mean i haven't met a ton of good people that are men to be honest but that's just me personally um I, i'm not i do not hate men i'm just saying i i hate some men but not all not, you know hashtag not all men <laughs> you know helene i can't be a, ma- a man hater i'm married to a man how could i be a man hater? i can't be a man hater i have a father like <laughs> exactly <laughs> As a daughter of fathers, yeah. of a father, you know, I can't be a man hater. Um, so, yeah, um, it's. I just don't want. I, I just don't want every man that's listening to this to think that we hate them. We don't hate you, I promise. I mean, if you did something reprehensible, maybe you should look into yourself and, you know, figure that out. <laughs> but other than that, no. I'm just saying, like, Usually male writers get a lot more press and publicity than female writers. Yes. So I yes. usually try to patron like be a patron with my dollars of female writers. That's oh. all. Yeah, no, totally. So yeah, it's a pretty good book. Um, haven't finished it yet. It's, it has like a Neil Gaiman type quality to it as well. Like, I don't know if you've read a lot of Neil Gaiman. I have like a lot of like a it's it has heard, like I've a, obviously heard of his stuff, yeah, but I've never I don't I don't read it like like an a, like an adult Percy Jackson type vibe, like okay. you know, just as I said, vibes. Um anyway, it's pretty interesting. It it's a old ish book because it was I think a tw- 2012 book. So okay. probably listeners have already read it, and I'm just like behind the curve, right? <laughs> They're probably like, Oh, that was so 2012. <laughs> Guys, I'm still in 2012 in my heart, okay? There are people out there reading Harry Potter for the first time in 2020, in our year of our Lord 2022, so, you know. <sighs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, <laughs> that's it for today's episode. Please join us next time as we talk about Chapter 26 of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, and this one is titled The Cave. If you've enjoyed this conversation, please take a second to give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you happen to be listening to the podcast right now in your ears. And uh, we want you to do this for a couple of reasons. Uh, One, it helps new listeners discover the podcast, which, I mean, that is a big reason why we make it. And also it just makes us happy and makes us feel validated and loved. So please do do those things for those reasons. Thank you. All right. We love external validation (laughs) in this podcast. But until then, politics managed. Support this show by going to patreon.com slash occupolitics. Our patrons keep this show going. You can find us online at occupolitics.com and we are at occupolitics on Twitter Facebook, and Instagram. You can email us your thoughts at info at occupolitics.com. Leave us a voicemail at 915-996-1699 and you might just hear yourself on the podcast. Adriana Wilson is the founder and creative director of the podcast. Helene Karp is the producer and social media manager. Allison Pullman is the audio wizard and editor who makes us sound so good. Cover art and physical rewards are designed by Adriana Wilson. The views expressed by the hosts and guests are expressly their own and not representative of their employers or associates. Occupolitics is part of the MuggleNet family of podcasts. I'm All sorry, right. I got distracted by there was a video that popped up of a woman like making beautiful, beautiful, beautiful art with sand, and I got distracted watching her do that for a second. I opened my <laughs> phone and I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> this is cool." Helene, it's your turn. It's my turn. Oh, duh! I forgot <laughs> about that. I thought we were going into the Patreon stuff. I was like, "Oh yeah, okay." <laughs>
Um, right. If you've enjoyed, it's okay. Sorry, Allison. One second. I'm tired. Okay. <laughs> 